and I do mean that literally, you guys will be speaking towards it. Mm -hmm. Or we leave it to chance and you guys can roll for it. Roll what? <laughs> Persuasion. <laughs> One. One. So either we spend a notable amount of time talking or risk it on probably a not great check. Uh, can we know the DC? Nope. Trust in the who dice. Who would we roll? Can we, as <laughs> we, say, can we choose who rolls? If we may. talk, and if we talk it out, uh, what we need to roll? I think you guys are talking. We have the content covered. Mm -hmm. So it's either you guys talk about it in full, or you leave it to the dice in full. <sighs> I'm, I'm confident in our ability to talk it out. But I'm also confident in our ability to, to meet a check. Your guys go. Uh, honestly, for me, it's hard on... to, uh, the amount of time we want to spend on it. Because if we talk it out, I have absolute confidence we'll be able to convince her. I don't know how, but I believe it. But, like, we can make it faster by rolling, but also we're not... We're not charisma characters, as we discovered earlier. We're really earlier. not charisma-based. <laughs> it, it would be one person rolling, right? Or all of us. Yeah. One. One. One person, yeah. So, Kerox is already pretty good. Uh, would it be at advantage, because... Nope. Just... You, know, you, guys, you guys have advantage for me helping each other. You have disadvantage for the situation. Ooh, interesting. You are neutralized. Uh, plus a d4, <laughs> plus a d6? Mm-hmm. Okay. With an unknown DC. Unknown DC. Oh, uh, I can tell you, it was 25 just to get in here. Yeah. To get a direct audience, so. So I assume, I assume 30. Which is a big ask. Especially where we are. Mm -hmm. It isn't all or nothing, I will say that. Right. Okay. The better you roll, the less you have to, have to say, earn, prove, etc. Right. If we're using Monster of the Week rules, there's a fail, a mixed success, and then a full success. Right. I... I'll leave it up to the roller, Fred, if you'd rather roll or talk it out. I think I'm leaning towards the roll, mm -hmm. mainly because I'm missing some sessions here and there, so I'm missing some context. <laughs> <That's>... oh. <laughs> if you guys want, you guys some can Some nuance. Me. Eva as well. She does have a plus five. Versus Caradox plus, plus seven. seven. No, but her charisma is plus five. Her pers per per persuasion is plus six. Ah. Okay, it's off by like one. Which. Yeah. Caradox is objectively. Plus, uh, you also have another um, honored craft in, the, in your pocket. You need another plus two in a pinch. So that's a, a plus nine, plus a d6, plus a d4. Half my proficiency is one, so I've already used my one. Oh, it's, you you add half your proficiency, okay. You Remember, add your, your proficiency in amount. Oh, your, your honor mod, right. So you already yeah. used yours. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Yes, yes, yes. So at best, you have three uses of a mm -hmm. plus two, assuming your honor mod goes up. So then, yeah, I, the math favors Karadok. See well then. Do. Yeah? Go so. with the grace of whichever Newman you hold dear. Caradoc. Roll it straight. Yeah, clovers Clovers are lucky, right? Clovers are lucky. That is part of the Clover King's mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would say portfolio. Wait, 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 make sure you feel for the for the nat 20 before you roll. <laughs> you gotta feel for yeah. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. In, it's up in the air. Somewhere. Oh god, wait. We're letting a fucking red roll. No! You, no! You <laughs> Here you can take my you go. Yeah, but hold on to it, but you can have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. right. Let, let, let me check for. Uh, let me bring up my list of crits real quick. Or not list of crits. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I looked. I looked around. I think I found one. Oh, that's not a twenty, but it's not <laughs> good. It's a D six. You still got a D six. Yeah, if he rolls a one, he hits thirty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thirty one. Thirty one. Thirty one. Yeah. You guys begin telling everything to the good captain. 
She does not give any pause when you bring up the Briar Queen's interesting appearance, but what she does do is she you know, clues in, she brings in her cleansers. This is likely not all of her cleansers, if by the reports, you know, <laughs> by the news, I guess, the uh, decrees. But it's quite clear that she does recognize all of them, their backstory, so to speak, their backgrounds, their family, their familial occupations. One of them, his fa his family is a group of scribes. One of them, his family, his brother is a dock worker. No, this guy's name is not, <laughs> not shared with a certain dock worker, don't worry. But she does bring in every bit of insight from her team, as much as they can provide. There's only so much they actually speak towards, though. The details here and there are oftentimes uh, confirming and, uh, and corroborating with your guys' account on certain things, particularly when it gets to the southern side of town, the anarchist district, as well as at uh, pharmacy that Mina helped liberate, raid. Uh, the owner wasn't there anymore. It was taken over by undead. So I'll say liberate. She does get intrigued on certain accounts of descriptions of the undead the shrieker is being keen among them she remarks that she's faced off against them before but they are a rather effective uh how uh, to say hunters one thing does catch her attention though but she says she'll wait for the whole account before she brings it back up you guys talk about Irina about the appearance of this bugbear abducting Irina. And for but a moment, you guys see a forlorn smile, a smirk go across her visage before she quickly mutes it, smothers and puts it away at the mention of the bugbears and your guys' assassination of them. When it comes to Murmureau, none of them have ever heard of it, but by your guys' account, she, uh, she does remark that it was a good deed that you've done, although she wonders the cost, and she does eye uh, Denver as that happens. <laughs> Denver, when that happens, you do hear a voice, your voice in your head. And they simply remark... You know, you're free to give me some of that recognition. And some thanks. He's not keeping quiet, by the way. Do you respond? Nope. <laughs> at the silence, or at the ignorance, the blatant purposeful ignorance, your other you does spitefully remark, Oh, okay, fine. Do you want to taste... Here, give a feel. And for a moment, you feel a presence eke into your mind, and you are hit with a sudden, immense migraine before it goes away just as quick as it came. You basically get stabbed in the head. Ooh. Oh. I think she definitely falters, about to fall over, holding her head, but catches herself as it goes away. Yeah, that's what he's doing right now. You're welcome. Your other you is holding back the Aberrant's influence, and it is not pleased to be on this side of town. Inevitably, your other you will lose. When that happens, you either better be leaving town, or be ready to die on this side of town. Ooh. Because the Aberrant does not want to stay here. I, uh, I think while we're on the topic, and after <laughs> that happens, Denver will, uh, recover <laughs> from her stumble and say I've got because um, Caradoc would have said that I was deemed to have some influence still on me, right? Yep. We wouldn't have stopped him. You're going to need to find <laughs> Holy Folk or some Ash Wardens to get a, di a proper diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I've I've got some help in me stay me with whatever's going on in my head. But, but I don't know how long it's going to last. You give us a warning when you're about to turn, and I'll be sure your death, your death is swift. I'd like to prevent that from ever happening. Then you best find a solution fast. 
And I'm afraid you won't find it in here. We're godsmen. Not miracle workers. Not godsmen. <laughs> There's an urgency in somewhere right here that's like, I do cheeky remarks. <laughs> Anyways, you guys continue your account. She is intrigued as well on your guys, onto your guys' conversation with the Chosen Star. Eva does ask why, although she has her own uh, assumptions. Captain Kenther's simple response This is not the first I've heard of the Chosen Star, and, well, I have met her in the field. Not in blows, not in combat. It seems that her disposition for conversation is shared across us all. She stops for a moment. We're fortunate in that regard. It does not... Actually, mm, Captain <laughs> is a cold hard butch. Romeo has insights. Ooh. Right. Insights. Nice. Nice. Write it down. My first one in a while. <laughs> <laughs> write down, please. I need a trip. I need the power trip. Write it down. Write it down. Hey, there is actually. Well, never mind. I was going to say, there is luck is right around. Uh, oh, it's okay. Well, I'll just ignore some of them. Oh. Um, to. I'll give it to Caradoc, Jin, and Hawk. Just kidding, not Hawk. Specifically, not him. Just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys, you guys can tell that there is some hesitation when Captain Kenther talks about not it not coming to blows to combat. You're not sure why. Hawk on a nat twenty, though, you know why. She doesn't think she'd win against the Chosen Star. Ooh. <laughs> well, keep in mind, Captain Kenther is a blade of radiance. She does divine judgment. If a lot of the if a lot of the zealots are resistant to radiance, what do you think the chosen star is? <laughs> She's immune to divine judgments like that to d radiant damage, <laughs> so, which means Captain Kenthris is just going to be fighting with a blade. Which you know that would be an interesting fight. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but it's the chosen people. star is the chosen star. Yeah. Yep. And it would it be safe to assume that Captain Kenthris probably doesn't have the same resistance or immunity. You don't know. She doesn't look it, certainly. Maybe she is just a deliverer, not an absolver. Mm -hmm. And she might just be taking a shit ton of radiant damage. Yeah, and the coin is fire, fire damage ain't gonna help her to the star either. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, boss, we'll napalm her. You'll do what to the fire people? And they're still uh, half effective <laughs> against the rest of the zealots. Well, not, not the chaplains. I digress. <laughs> um, you guys eventually finish out telling your tale. Do you guys tell how you guys got here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't stop Caradoc. <laughs> I mean, it would be a show of faith how else do we explain? <laughs> I, I, I assume they already know about the tunnels, right? I feel they kind of have to. I mean, we can assume all we want. The tunnels will be useful when we uh, evacuate, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm, you guys, this side wouldn't evacuate that way. Right. Oh, right. You'd have to pass through a newt glassed zone and the play district to get to this side of town. Uh... That's, that's not worth it for the sovereign side. No. <laughs> they can just go the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See how fucking they can know. Yeah, why not? I mean, like yeah. I said, at least to me, it's a show of faith of, hey, also, how you got him, by the way. <laughs> also, if we lie to her, she's going to see through that in a heartbeat, so it's like, uh, let's not soil this. We'll keep the same insight rules from before, um, to, to the same people that succeeded before. Uh, uh, Nat 20 doesn't do <laughs> anything different this time, I'm afraid. No worries. Um, but you guys can tell that she is uh, happy, but disheartened at that fact. Could you go happy into more detail on that? Uh, happy she's, hear she's happy to hear that it happened, but disheartened to hear that it happened. 
<laughs> she's happy that the criminals are true to their word. She's disheartened that she had j- judged them wrongly. Aww. Aww. <laughs> what is going on over there? So who's yelling? Oh, that's that's my bad. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Right. Yeah, go do a shoot over something. I want to join the party. I don't do it. I don't fight it. You like it was gonna. Yeah, yeah, not I, saying I, like I it's a joke, it's a joke, but like, no, nah, no, nah, don't for, do it, bro. <laughs> for legal reasons, I have to say, don't do it. Okay. Oh, no. In my heart. Because you said for legal reasons. <laughs> 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 but, but uh, yeah, you guys eventually. That she, like, kind of did wrong by them, and that's like, damn, Miss Joshua. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole scene for all the captains discussing the criminals, but. Uh, you guys aren't going back in time, so moving on. Damn. Yet. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, who knows what this campaign, right? Oh, but as uh, you, eventually you guys finish. Mm-hmm. And she has not moved an inch, really. She is still standing there at attention. Although her expression is it's still razor sharp, but it is a lot, a lot less um, damning. Particularly hostile. <laughs> It's hard to say. It's like it's like you got an extra ten percent on resting bitch face, hey. but, but it is a noticeable ten percent. But it's still resting bitch face. Mm-hmm. You all made a big gamble coming here. I hope you all realize that. Lots are at stake, and you're going to gamble Which their lives. Rest? If we found you wrong. You have been wasting your own time and gambling lives that aren't your own. And if we did nothing, they'd die anyway. No one else is making the effort right now. I don't think you all would have done nothing. I think you all would have found a different approach. One that was more insured. As soon as we had that conversation with the Chosen Star, or Star's Chosen, whatever she calls herself, it became apparent that the only real course of action was evacuation. Some would disagree. I'm sure. A lot of people I'm, to evacuate. I'm sure a whole slew of them don't want to leave. I'm sure some people on your southern Valkestrian side would have rather had us all here in the north die. I'm sure... A lot of people up here would rather they die instead. A lot? No. Some. Yes. Certainly none of the captains. Nor the commander. Nor the Ventorians. She produces a ledger, a little portfolio, which you guys didn't catch her having walking into the room. It's a small little, they couldn't like a manila folder, right? This little ledger of papers. And she it was tossed it onto the table and slides it your guys' direction. Who opens it? I will. Go you ahead. open it. You open up this portfolio and it has a report in it. Written in a very uh, methodical, engineer, chicken scratch sort of way. Very <laughs> functional, not... <laughs> flourishing and it is as you read it uh it reads in the counts of an individual unnamed their team unnamed numbers unlisted in a zone outside of valtonio unlisted in Uh which it is heavily affected by the plague and its spores a location unknown of course who they ran into an interesting group of individuals, unnamed, (laughs) unlisted, uh, appearances described, uh, (laughs) etc., etc. It is clearly a report from the plague agent you guys met. Hell yeah. uh, It even has Devastator Fist in it. (laughs) Hey. So we know which one it is, too. (laughs) That one has actually named, funnily enough. Um... It's a report of this plague agent to whomever that whomever reads these, accordingly Captain Kenthris, um, about who they found, these people of interest, as well as what they were uh, supposing. They were 
petitioning for. A cure to the plague outside of the city's limits. You don't know what the verdict was. Perhaps that's not something you include in such a report. But it's quite clear that from how ruffled these pages are, the report has been examined extensively by multiple people. I had my doubts when I read that report. To be honest with all of you, I still do. I think there's only one cure to this plague. And that's through fire. Through purgation. Maybe not in so extreme a manner as the zealots would have it, but I can't deny that I haven't seen any zealot shamblers. Only that of civilians and guardsmen. The issue with the zealots is less that they're trying to get rid of the plague and more that they're trying to get rid of everyone else. Only their chosen will stay. Which means no Ventorians. Faltonians. Both. Yep. <laughs> Either. <laughs> The zealots can be handled. They will be handled. But I'd like to extract as much usefulness out of them while we still have them around. And as I oh. said, they're effective. How confident Too is effective. she in saying that they will be handled? Roll your insight. Uh, I will. And I'm going to roll terrible. I'm going to... It's reverse, reverse psychology. See, nice. I told you. To... <laughs> uh, Although at the same time, it's her. We've forgotten O's golden rule. You have to chuckle before you do an insight. Remember? You <laughs> that's, to... right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it is. We, we forgot his golden rule. No wonder. And, it, and his golden rule was also have a plus thirteen to insight rolls. <laughs> that's <laughs> also true. <laughs> also true. Claim to be like <laughs> twenty twenty three. She. 23 is really good. The people <laughs> zealots, oh, she's very confident they can be uh, excised, eliminated. She's confident on that. That can be easily done. The star is a different question, and you guys have introduced a new variable into her uh, planning, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You can't. It's going to be a bit harder to fight a Newman. And as Zakeo wants to see, what happens when Newmans do battle? Yeah. By history, it's not. It's either a one-sided affair, or no. Or it is wins. a, or it's a brutal, brutal bear victory. <laughs> it depends entirely upon which new mid is more powerful, either outright or by the sabotaging of mortal forces. So a Numa that has no followers left in their hometown is a bit. E so no, not it doesn't become a pushover but it is noticeably easier to take over versus a Numa that has an entire army and a city under it. Like, the Bloodstar and its Zealots. So, it depends. Regardless, that's uh, where her disposition's at. She is very confident that every mortal <laughs> chosen can be dealt with. Mm -hmm. She's here talking about their usefulness. Uh, I think Hawk would say their usefulness. Their usefulness does not outweigh the destruction they will rot. In five days' time, within the week, maybe even less, they're going to burn all of Velkestra, Valtonia, whatever you want to call it, to the ground. And then they'll be the only ones left. Five days' time. It took us, what, half a day to get here. We used the tunnels. Tunnels? Ah. Herman's tunnels. All the guards from here don't know where they are, which means you would have to go above ground. You would fight for every foot of the way. You wouldn't be able to beat them in that time. And all the while, every... What am I trying to say? And all the while, 
It would be getting hotter and hotter. You'd be cooking in your armor by the time you got there. And I see how heavy those guys are ar or, uh How heavy those guys are armored. Gesture towards the... Uh, uh, Cleansers. 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 There you go. Their kit is fire. resistant to the heat, I assure you, but I understand your point. But let me ask you all this. Even if the South is suing for peace, you would rather we just abandon this entire city versus try to strike at the heart of the problem. It's not abandonment. It's a tactical it? retreat. A tactical retreat implies you're going to push up to the previous position you just left. What position would there be? You're talking about moving thousands of people. To where? The Ventorians are already at their limit with us, I assure you. They have a handful of final solutions to the scenario, and if none of those seem palatable or feasible, then they abandon Valtonio. Our support, gone. Food, what? shelter, coin. What's that town to, uh... Was it the south? South of here? I don't oh. think you guys... I don't think you guys... I, I don't told know you if we name. ever got the name. You guys didn't pass through it. Mm -hmm. So you guys actually don't know. You guys... <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's the closest oh. town south east of here, so... Yeah, we, we know we know it's the closest town. It's uh, four days travel, is that right? Uh, if you're yeah. careful about it, wasn't it? But if you're quick. Four normal. Mm -hmm. uh, correctly. Four normal. Mm -hmm. Take off a day or so. Mm -hmm. If you're... Speedy. Right. Four days. Uh, give, four days, give or take a day. Um, yeah. And the pitch is in... Eight? Seven? Seven now. It was eight before. From what I remember. So it was two days after the hazard happens, so, yeah. Seven now. Gotcha. Including today. Days until pitch. Okay, track that machine as well. Um, I would say one piece logistically is you can't just instantly start moving people. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, that's going to take probably a day of setup and logistical running in and of itself. But so long as we can put distance between us and the town within those five days, then... At least it's a start. Yeah. More people are likely to be saved than if we did nothing. Then, uh, I was just talking about, like, uh, what would we do without these thousands of people? There's a town southeast of here. It's the closest one. Big thanks for coming four days of travel, give or take a day. Pitches in seven days, so... I think that's our time limit. Because... You speak of Helmdir. We didn't get its name, but I reckon so. Yeah, it's the only main town I can think of that's southeast of here. Four days sounds accurate to its travel, although it's been a while since I've gone in anywhere near that direction. But don't worry, I got you guys. Helmdir. <laughs> Helmdir. Um, Viking going off, or not a Viking, someone going off to off to war. Helmdir. <laughs> 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 Hello, my name is Helmdir. 